Hey Nick, how you doing? I'm great, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I know a lot about your love of soul music yeah. and things, but I've, I was interested in, to see if, um, when you were growing up and things, the blue, you know, how did the blues figure in well, things? Well, let's talk about that. As you can imagine, I was 13 years old and I saw the Beatles on TV, but in black and white and the Stones and the Kinks and the Who, and it was all very, you know, English brigade of what they what called pop music back in the day, you know? And then, you know, before, before I school, I started to listen to Bob Dylan that led me to, you know, Howling Wolf, you know, and the blues artists from that. In fact, I had a band called The Hooker, Lee's, for, for John Lee Hooker, when I was, like, in, like, the last year of school. So I was very interested in... And the Stones really helped me get into black American blues artists from the Delta, you know. Yeah. And, of course, around that same time, I got into soul music. But, you know, for me, I um, I studied a lot of black American artists, blues singers, and, you know, of course, soul singers, as you know that. But my roots are when you have a, a soup and you put in that soup rock blues and, and, and soul. It's Glenn Hughes. You stir it up and you get the ingredients of what Glenn Hughes is. Did you find, coming from Cannock, you must have played in the the Midlands scene, the Birmingham scene and everything. Always. So that blues thing that, like, went where Sabbath had and Robert Plant and things, was, were, you, were you playing in that kind of scene, playing club gigs okay. and things in that kind of scene? Yeah, you know, Robert and Sabbath have been friends of mine. Robert has been since the 60s. Um, and his influences are more blues and delta than mine, simply because, you know, I have to mention this to you, that in 1965, uh, my girlfriend's brother held a discotheque in Warsaw in, in the Midlands. And uh, he, he ran this discotheque all night for two nights a week. And I used to fetch the coffee for him. Um, and he played only Tamla Motown, you know. That, that's what got me into black American music. Uh, I never really left. The blues, I mean, I always love blues, you know. Uh, in fact, I'm a blues singer. I mean, you know, I'm a rock soul singer, as you know, but there's a lot of blues coming out of yeah. it. Yeah. Which, obviously, you can, you can hear it. With Joe, you can hear that kind of swagger that we've created with that country. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I love it. Did you get, did you, um, I was thinking that, that um, some of those sort of blues singers, uh, like Jimmy Witherspoon and Bobby Blue Bland and people like that, who kind of had that soul edge to their voices. Let me tell you, Bobby Blue Bland was my guy. I mean, more so than most blues soul singers. He was like an originator for me. Because um, it, it spoke to me. A lot of the really early blues guys, you know, 
as much as I really appreciated their work, there was only so, you know, I, I, I'm a quick uh, listener and a quick, you know, uh, I have this huge sponge and I like to take it all in, but Bobby Blueblind was the one that stuck with me the most, you know, I mean, David, somebody else saw him play at the Whiskey in 1974. It's fantastic. Yeah, and, and did Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City, of course. Of course. <laughs> with Wise Night, yeah. David, I, I, I read somewhere that David said that when you were in Purple together, you used to jam a lot on blues stuff with Purple. Yeah, we did. We, um, when we were writing Burn, you know, we'd go down to, to the room, the dungeon in, in Clearwell Castle, and we'd start playing blues, and then we'd start writing, you know. But every day there was a, 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 ju- a blues jam going on, you know, uh, with these players, you know, Richie and John were exceptional players. So, you know, yeah, the, the whole thing, you know, when I do sound checks, when I run through things, when I go to work, when I get started, I'm always singing some blues stuff because it's very, very, very comforting for me to sing it. Um, I had a bit of a, you know, B.B. King, bless him, um, you know, he, he was a big hero to me, and, and Joe especially. And I might have said something like, blues you know, music is, you know, it's really, really music that is, can be very painful to to hear and to sing. And, and then B.B. heard I said that, and he said, no, 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 it, it, that's not the way it really is. And he was right, you know. You know, you don't have to be in pain to sing the blues. Trust me. Um, but I just think it's a mindset, really. So uh, I'm just really happy that people uh, understand that I have come from. I really do come from blues before soul. So that's where I came from. ask you a bit about the the two albums that you did with Mike at, at Shrapnel uh, in the early 90s. You are, I believe, on LA Blues Authority, the first volume, but then the second volume they did, you you ran the whole show and, and wrote songs in a blues style for that, didn't you? I did, I did. Yeah. Now, remember, this is important for people to know. This this first time I did an album when I was sober. So this would have been the end of 92, and I've been sober about... Oh, a good 10 months or something. Mm. Um, and when Mike Barney came to me, that, remember now, I hadn't recorded anything since, wow, it would have been uh, maybe Seven Star or something like that, or Phenomenal, I can't remember. And it was important for me to to 
dig deep and find out. Number, well, number one, Mike Barney wanted me to play blues with metal guitar players. So all, all these people were, were brought in to, to, to jam with me on songs that I had written. And uh, it was a bit of a strange concoction, really, because blues playing is not really rock playing, you know. It really isn't. Only a few people that can play blues and rock together. You know, I worked with one of them. But that album for me was the first record I did clean and sober. And the lyrics, if you listen to them, you, you, you know that I've been through, through a lot of pain. Hence my statement for B.B. King. But yeah, that was the first that was the start of it for me. And it opened the door for me to return. I thought it was interesting that the, the first Blues Authority album was, was all, sta- I call them standards, well-known tracks, blues tracks, but your one was, was again, you were obviously asked by Mike to, to write the songs. So it was, it was interesting, um, but, it, but you had to write those in, in a blues vein, shall I say. Is that, is, is that the way that... Well, when I think of those songs, you know, like, obviously, I'm the man, and, you know, working to the blues. I mean, these songs are, you know, ripped that are blues orientated. I didn't go too deep into the blues, you know. Um, again, you know, looking back, you know, if I'd have been doing it now, it would have been different because I had a, a, a team of people around me that I thought would be appropriate to play the blues with. You know, like Joe or people of that ilk, you know, that really understand bluesology. But I think I did a, a pretty admirable job. A lot of people like that blues album I did. And I thought I was as bad as, um, it was about, for me, it was about coming out again and, and playing music. And lo and behold, it was the blues album that started with that. I take you back a bit further back to trapeze yeah and i ask you there was a, a quote i read that said it was the first successful merging of black music with white rock was that something you were very conscious of when you were recording the album oh i never wanted to be, this is kind of a happy joke for you i never wanted to become black i was just heavily influenced by black american singers as you know you know that uh, it's not like I was in, wasn't influenced by Lennon and McCartney either, or, 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 or Mickey and Keith. But I was heavily, heavily influenced as a, a, a very young teenager on what was coming out of Detroit and, and, and Memphis. So for people for people to say that we sounded like you know the first band that played white blues funk music was was pretty appropriate because if you listen to you other music with just the band, I was 19 years old. Mm. Years old, and that—that that was the ingredient of my life. That album. your singing style did that just de- you know develop through your love of soul i got some information that i haven't spoke to a lot of people about it's not that i don't get asked this question 
but I want, I want you to know who was my first influence as a singer. This is good stuff here. It was Stevie Winwood, who was basically copying Ray Charles. Yeah. So if you listen to early Glenn from 69 or 70, you know, from the first Trippage album to maybe Medusa, you'll hear a thinness in my voice. But it, in fact, you know, we had no time from, from Burn. It's that tone, that, it must be a Midlands tone. You know, um, that I used, and, and that I thank Stevie for that because he's been a, a, a huge uh, mentor for me from my early, late teens. So, you know, I have a lot of influence from, from, from obviously, a huge Beatles fan to even Jimi Hendrix's voice spoke to me. Well, that's one of the Was your vocal range as wide as it was? You know, did you that that range of octaves that you've got? Did you always have that? Was I didn't that... know I had it, the range I had. Let's just say that I don't know. Come by the mid seventies, you know, um, even with Trapeze before Purple, I I wasn't unsure whether I should use the, the four or five octaves which I do. And, it, you know, for something, I've developed it over the years where for me to sing in that very, very high register, it's really a natural thing for me to do. I really take care of what God has given me, this voice, this, this gift that God has given me. And I do a lot of shows every year, and I've been doing that for a long time. 